Do you guys know what has happened? This, this 12 years old Turkish chess player has become the current youngest grandmaster. So Abhimanyu Mishra record is broken? No, no, this little guy is the youngest grandmaster right now but in overall history he is the fourth youngest grandmaster. Yagis Khan Erdogmas has achieved this feat in 12 years, 9 months and 29 days. Just behind Gukesh Damaraju, Sergei Karyakin and Abhimanyu Mishra with 5 months. Let's see his game as people are calling him the next Magnus Carlsen. For the introduction, this game happened in the Serbia Open round 6 in the year 2022. With the black we have the strong Serbian Grandmaster Kovacevic Alexander. And with the white our youngest Grandmaster Yagis Khan Erdogmas. So let's see how Yagis Khan ended this classical game in 29 moves. Erdogmas opens the game with d4 and Alexander replied with knight to f6. Very standard c4 and here Alexander chooses a very sharp system with b6 which is a Queen's Indian but accelerated. Main idea in this position is to grab the whole center with e4 but as the knight can take it so you have to prepare it. He could go Queen to c2, Bishop to b7 and Knight to c3 to go e4 but in this position he chooses to play f3 to play e4. Alexander continued with g6 so he is going for the double fianchetto system. Erdogmas grabs the whole center and black plays d6 stopping the annoying e5. White pawns looks great in the center but they can be challenged anytime with either c5 or e5. Erdogmas continued with knight to c3 and bishop to g7 by black. White put the bishop on e3 and black castles. White position looks very promising as he can make queen's bishop battery and just can attack the black with the flank pawn and white makes a battery with queen to d2. Black had enough and strikes in the center with c5 and white just takes more space with d5. Black didn't wait much and challenges the center again with e6. White plays the calm bishop to e2. Black decides to take on d5 and white takes back with the c-pawn as with the e-pawn he was getting an open e-file. In this position, a6 is a known move, rook to e8 is a known move, but black plays knight to a6 which is a new move. Let's see how Yagis can't deal with it. He plays knight to h3 and black takes the knight. But instead of taking the bishop, he takes the undefended knight while protecting the g2 pawn. Black saves the bishop on d7 and white plays a4 so not allowing b5 in the near future. Black plays knight to e8 with the idea of shifting it to the queen's side and then preparing to push the pawn. And white saw the opportunity to either weaken the king's side pawns or trade off the pieces. With the move bishop to g5, in this position if you play queen to c7 or b8 this will be an ugly move. And playing knight back to f6 is like you just lost a tempo so here black plays f6. And bishop goes to f4 and black just saw the opportunity to attack the central pawn again with f5. White could play bishop to g5 as black has again allowed it but he decides to castle. Few moves from now clearly shows how mature his play is and why he deserves the grandmaster title. After f takes e4 majority of you in this position will takes back with the pawn. As knight takes e4 will allow a tactic of bishop takes b2 as queen is the only piece defending the bishop. But this is exactly what he did to win a bishop pair as the diagonal was open so he wants to win a dark square bishop. After knight takes e4 and bishop takes b2 he plays bishop to g5. Now his bishop is really attacked so he plays bishop to f6. He could go bishop to d4 check but in this line you will see queen takes bishop and you will regain the pawn in this variation. So white wins the dark score bishop and then he puts the rook on the open e file. Now game is about to end in 9 moves. It looks like white is blundering the a4 pawn but if black grabs it he will have a completely losing position after rook to e6 and queen to f4 idea. So black plays rook to f7 which is a multi-purpose move. First it don't allow bishop to f6 to come with the tempo and secondly it vacates the f8 square to the black pieces. 
Now white plays bishop to b7, rook to b8 and bishop to c6. It looks like if you take the bishop you will have a 4 versus 2 on the queen side but because of the queen to a2 move these pawns are not an asset for the black. Black plays rook to c8 and white just ignores it and plays f4 and said you can have 4 versus 1 on the queen side I will just attack on the king side. Here black gambled the s6 pawn in order to play d5. But white always had rook to e6. After knight to e4 and queen to d3, black plays a blunder, rook to f6. Now can you guys find a stunning winning move? It's simple and beautiful c7. If you play queen to d7, you will see rook takes knight and even if you play rook takes pawn which happened in the game, you will again see rook takes knight. So in this position, Grandmaster resigned the game and what a beautiful victory for our 12 years old Grandmaster. If you like the game, do like the video and subscribe to the channel to see more chess content. So see you all in the next video.